First thing we need to do is we need to clone the PD for iOS repository from GitHub. We'll click on Wiki, and on the next page, we'll click on PD for iOS. To clone the PD for iOS repository to our computer, we'll follow the instructions under Xcode Project Setup. Before we clone the repository, we need a project folder to work within. So I'll head to the desktop and I'll create a new folder by pressing Shift Command N, and I'll name that folder Learning PD iOS. I'll need the terminal in order to clone the repository. So I'll press Command Space, and that will bring up Spotlight. And in Spotlight, I'll start to type Terminal and press Return when I see the icon. Now I'll change directory into the newly created Learning PD iOS folder. And once I've changed the directory, I'll copy the command to clone the Git repository for PD for iOS into the terminal. What this has done is it has created a new PD for iOS folder within Learning PD iOS. And within that folder, there's a whole bunch of other folders, but we're most interested in the Live PD folder. Within the Live PD folder, there aren't any contents right now, and that's because we have yet to initialize and update the submodule for PD for iOS. So we'll do that now. Heading back to the terminal, I'll change directory into the PD for iOS folder. Then I'll initialize and update the submodules for PD for iOS. When this is completed, you can see in the background that there are new contents within the Live PD folder. Though this is the last instruction on the wiki page for PD for iOS, there's one more thing that we need to do. If we take a look at the pure data folder, we'll see that it's empty. It used to be the case that when you initialized and updated the Live PD submodule, it would copy the contents of pure data into this folder, but now we actually have to change directory into Live PD and once again initialize and update the submodules for Live PD. So we'll do that now. I'll change directory into Live PD. Remember, I'm currently in the PD for iOS directory. Then I'll initialize and update the submodules for Live PD. Once this is complete, you can see in the background that the contents for Pure Data have been copied into the Pure Data folder. And with this, we've fully cloned the PD for iOS repository onto our computer, and it's ready to be imported into Xcode.